Hello and welcome back to another cookie tag video. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you on how you can make your very own doors system. So this system is totally scalable, you can make as many doors as you wish, and it's super simple to use. So as you can see, inside of Workspace, we have a folder called Doors. Now you can see we have the doors labelled A and B. Let's just create another door, duplicate it across, and let's just call this door C. Okay, so now that I've done that, I'm going to show you how to use this system by pressing on the play button. Keep in mind, all scripts in today's video are downloadable, and you can find the source code to them down in the description down below. Okay, so here we are inside of Roblox Studio, and you can see I have an open and close command. So now, if I run my open command, and say for example, capital A, it will open door A. Now, as you can see, I can close it again with the close command, slash close, and then A, and then we can open. For example, let's say we want to open door C, we can say open C, it will open door C, and then let's say slash close C, and the door will close. And keep in mind, this is totally scalable, so you can make as many doors as you want to. So now we're going to head into a brand new Roblox Studio instance, where I'll show you how you can make this for yourself. Okay, so we're now inside of our brand new Roblox Studio instance and to start off, we're going to create a folder inside of our workspace called Doors. Now, since this is totally scalable, we're going to have to make a folder where we can add all of our doors. This is so our script will know where it needs to look for the doors. So we're going to head over to our workspace, we're going to click the plus button, we're going to add a folder and we're going to call this folder Doors, just like this. Now, I'm going to create two doors today, however, you can create as many doors as you wish. To start off, I'm going to create my door, I'm going to add a part. Now, let's drag it over. And then I'm going to scale it up. We're going to make it around this size. Then let's duplicate it. And then now we're going to have to select both of these parts. I'm using shift and click, by the way, to select more than one part. And then I'm going to drag it inside of my doors folder. Now it's all well and good having the doors inside of our folder, but at the moment the script can't tell these two doors apart. So what we need to do is we need to give the doors unique names. Now when you run the slash open command, afterwards there's a bit of text that you put and that's the door you're opening. And that is technically the name of the part inside of Roblox Studio. For example, if I have a part called for example, door one, I'm going to say slash open door one. So I want my doors to be labeled A and B. So I'm going to click on my part and I'm going to type in name and I'm going to call this part A. Then I'm going to call my other door part B. To make sure they don't go all over the place, I'm going to anchor them. I'm going to click on both of them and then I'm going to click anchor. And now, that should be everything, they're inside of my doors folder, they have unique names, and they're anchored. So now it's time to add a few more things into our different folders. So first of all, we need to create a remote event inside of replicated storage. So we're going to call this remote event message. So we're going to click on replicated storage, we're going to type in a remote event, and then we're going to select message. Now this will allow our server to communicate with the client and we're going to use this to send notifications to the player. Next we're going to head over to start a GUI where we're going to create a local script. So plus local script and then we're going to call this local script notification handler. And now this will handle every time a notification comes in. So we're going to start off with the notification handler since it is a shorter and simpler script. So to start off, we're going to define some variables. First of all, we're going to say local replicated storage equal game get service replicated storage. Nope, that is start player replicated storage. There we go. And now this will be getting all of the content inside of our replicated storage folder. Now we're going to say local starter GUI equals game get service and then starter GUI 
Now we're going to need the starter GUI so we can use the set core, which is part of the starter GUI, to send a notification. So now we need to handle when our remote event is fired. So we're going to say replicated storage dot message and now message is the remote event that we just created and then we're going to say on client so when it's fired connect and then function and then text so we're getting what text was sent through the remote event and then we're going to say start a UI set core and now this is how we're going to send our notification we're going to use two speech marks and then we're going to say send notification just like how I've done it on screen and then we're going to say comma and now we're going to have to create a table there we go I'm going to format this so it looks a bit pretty and now we need to give it a title so we're going to say title equals that is not how you say title title equals notification and then we're going to put a comma and now we're going to have to say text and text is kind of like the description and then we're going to say equals text that's what we defined above and then the duration we're going to set to three that's how long the notification stays on screen i think that three three seconds works best for me now we're going to have to create a script inside of server script service and this is going to be handling all the chat commands so we're going to head over to server script service we're going to click plus and then we're going to click on script and then we're going to call this script open door command great now we need to customize everything inside of this script so this script is a little bit complicated but if you follow my lead carefully it should be easy so now we're going to import the tween service this allows us to make these smooth animations so we're going to say local tween service I was covering the text there. Equals game get service tween service. Now we've got the tween service, so we can use that later for our animations. And then we're going to say local replicated storage equals game get service replicated storage. And as you can see before, inside of our client script, we got the replicated storage too. So here, the script is detecting when replicated storage dot message is fired, but of course we need to fire the remote event. So we're going to fire the remote event from our server script. So to continue, we're going to create another few variables. So we're going to say local prefix equals, and now you need to create the little symbol or word you want to have before you run a command. For most people, they use uh, an exclamation mark some people use slashes some people use columns today I think I'm going to go with a slash next we're going to say local open door command and now we need to use an open command so in this instance I'm going to use open and that means to open a door you must say slash open and then the door you want to open next I'm going to say local close door command equals close and then in this instance someone will have to say slash close and then the name of the door that they want to close next we need to make sure that people aren't abusing the system or having access to these commands when they shouldn't so we need to say local group id equals i'm going to set this to zero for now and then we're going to say local min rank equals zero Next, we're going to have to define these variables to make sure that people can't use the commands unless they have permission to do so. Okay, so you can see we're now inside of the group of my choice. Now your group ID will be different to mine, but to get your group ID, you need to look inside of your URL. Now after groups slash, there should be a number. Now double click on this number, right click, and then copy it. Now this is your group ID. Keep in mind every group has a unique ID. Then let's head back to studio and then let's place in our group id right here now we need a minimum rank because we don't want people who are members of the group to have access to this command so let's head over to configure group then let's head over to members and now you can see we have all of our members here and then as you can see you can all give them different roles and if we go over to roles you can see each role has a unique rank so you can see Moderator has 2, Admin has 3, 
developer has 5 and owner has 255. Now I don't want players inside of my group to be using the command, but I want moderators to be able to use the command. So I'm going to copy this number, and this means anybody who is above the moderator role, that is admin, developer, and owner, will have access to this command. So let's head back to Roblox Studio, and then let's replace the minimum rank with that number. Now we can continue scripting. Next we're going to create a function that we can fire whenever we want to send a notification to the client. So we're going to say local function notification and then we're going to say text and player. So this is the text that we want to put and the player we're sending it to. And then we're going to say replicated storage dot message fire client not fire all clients because we only want the person who's running the command to be able to use this. So we're going to say fire client. Next we're going to put in here the text. No, actually first we want to put the player and then we want to put the text. So here we're telling the server what remote event to fire, who we're going to fire it for, and what the text for the notification should be. Now we're also going to create a function that can handle the animation of the door. So we're going to say local function animate door and then we're going to say door transparency can collide and player there's a quite a lot of parameters you have to pass through so we're going to drop a line and now we need to get the door instance because right now we're getting the door name but that isn't the instance so we can't really do anything to it so to find the door instance we need to say local door instance equals game dot workspace dot doors and then we're looking through the doors folder until we find the first client that has the name of the door we're looking for. Next, we're going to have to see if the door exists. So if door instance, so if it does exist, then do this. For now, I'm just going to put a comment there and then we're going to say else and then we're going to find notification and we're going to say door doesn't exist and then we're going to say player. So now we're firing the function that we just created, we're giving the text and we're giving the player who ran the command. Now we can remove this comment and then we're going to use our tweening service to create a smooth animation. So we're going to say tween service create door instance, that's the one we specified above. Then we're going to say tween info dot new and this is how long the animation will last for i think 2.5 seconds works best whether you can customize this to be a really slow animation or a really fast animation and next we need to tell the tween what properties to edit so we need to edit the transparency here so we're going to use our squiggly brackets we're going to say transparency equals and then transparency once more and then this is telling our tween to animate these properties to this value and now we have our animation but we need to play it so we say colon play and then we're playing the animation now we need to make sure that the player can get through the door so we're going to have to set the can collide to the specified can collide we need to say door instance and then we need to say dot can collide make sure you're using a capital C equals can collide that we defined above and now we have our animate door function done. So next we need our perform action. So next we're going to have to create the perform action function. And this basically just tells the animate door function to fire. And we can do that by saying local function perform action. Then we need to say the action that we're trying to perform. The door that we're trying to edit. And then the player who's running it. And now we're going to say if action equals open so if the user is trying to open the door then animate door and now we want to edit the door then we want to set the transparency so we want it to be fully see-through then we want to say false as we want it to be non light so people can walk through it and then we're going to use a player that we defined above then we're going to say else so if they're trying to close the door animate door door zero so it's not see-through and then we're going to say true so people can collide against it so you can't just walk through it 
and then we're going to say player. Now all we need to detect is when the person inside of the game runs the command, we need to check if they have the appropriate rank and they're using the correct command. So we're going to say game.players.player added connect function player and now every time a player joins we're getting the player player.chatted connect function and then message so we're getting the message they send if player get ranking group group id so now we're getting the rank of the player that just joined inside of the group we defined above is bigger or equals to our min rank then and to make sure that all the messages are lower we're going to say local lower case message equals string dot lower and then message now we need to check if they're running the command that opens the door so to do this we say if string dot find lowercase message so the message that we just made lowercase prefix now dot dot we're going to concatenate it with the open door command then now this is checking if it's the open door command we're going to say local split message equals string dot split message and then we're going to put speech box and then we're going to press space now this is splitting the string every time somebody uses the space bar to make a space mark next we're going to drop and then we're going to say local door to open and now we're getting the second word that was used in this command and then we're going to say equals split message then we're going to use square brackets and we're going to say two so we're getting the second word inside of the text message and then we're going to say perform action open then door to open and then the player that's running that command now we can copy lines 37 to 41 again for the close command and then we're going to say if string dot find lowercase message prefix and then close door command so if it finds the close door command then and then we need to replace the open with close now you can publish that do all of that stuff and now i'm going to test this out to make sure this works inside of my game so we remember we have the doors a and b they're anchored and let's click on the play button and make sure everything works okay so here we are inside the game and let's make sure our open command doesn't work if we enter in the wrong door so let's say we're trying to open door d which completely doesn't exist you can see door doesn't exist let's just say we try to close door d which still doesn't exist the door doesn't exist now let's try opening door a which does exist you can see the door will go ahead and open let's open door b too open b you can see both doors are now open now let's close b and then let's close door a and now that's everything for today's video thank you for watching i know this video was quite a long one and it was quite complex so if you have any issues feel free to head over to our forms forms.thecookie.dev and make a scripting support post and myself or one of the scripters will help you thank you for watching that's all from me and bye bye <laughs>